Welcome to the AR Startup Podcast series, a series dedicated to enterprise and entrepreneurship. We will be joined by a wide range of guest speakers who will be sharing their insights into starting a business, their own personal story, and what challenges they have faced and how they have overcome. If you're the one looking to start your own business or have a freelancing career or being into an entrepreneurship, this series is for you. Stay tuned with us to get some amazing tips and advice from our guest speakers. And let's welcome our guest speaker for today. A very warm welcome to the ARE Startup Podcast. My name is Omkar Singh and today we are joined by Robert Good. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. You are also an alumni of Cambridge School of Arts. So it's nice to have you back on the ARU's podcast. You have a career in IT and you have been an author. You have been a director of a company. So how, how this is all going together, which is, which is seemingly contrast to each other? Well, that's a good question. Um, I suppose the short answer is, I mean, I, I, I was interested in art, but at a relatively late age. So, you know, I missed, I missed out first time round. So my first career was in, was in IT, as you say, and I, I worked as a programmer. And, um, but I always had in the back of my mind that I was interested in art and I couldn't find a way of making it happen. And so um, it was really Anglia Ruskin. They started a Master of Fine Arts program and I saw the prospectus and I thought, wow, this this is it. This is what was made for me to kind of meld the two interests together. So I went back to school and did the masters um, as a way of, of, uh, of trying to trying to do some art. How the two fit together in terms of art and technology, that it, they're both about inquiry. There's both about trying to get to the bottom of things, trying to understand things. And, and in technology and in, in a lot of kind of science-based activities, it's through a, a process of inquiry a, a, around the sciences. With art, it gives you this opportunity to pursue the same sorts of questions about life and about community and about relationships and all those things, whatever the subject is that you're particularly interested in, but through a different way, it's a more open-ended approach. So I would say that the link between the two is that they're both modes of inquiry. They're just different ways of going about it. Maybe that's it. Yeah, and, and when you joined the university, you were a mature student. So uh, did you have uh, your any sort of experience beforehand, any ongoing work you were been involved in? Well, I'd, I'd been, so I, I um, was working in IT, but I'd been painting pictures for a, a long time. I decided that I wanted to teach myself uh, how to paint. And uh, so I did it in my spare time and I never quite got there. But, um, you know, that, that was my own approach to uh, trying to become an artist. I thought, well, if I can, if I can find a way to kind of paint, you know, the pictures that I want to paint, then it'll all come together and I'll make this transition from the one to the other. But it didn't quite work out that way. I went to the, to the um, I say, to the Cambridge School of Art and I hardly didn't pick up a paintbrush ever since. I've, I've, I, I threw away the paints in a way, or, or rather I replaced the paints with technology. So I was interested in words and text and language. So the 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 continuing theme of of technology and knowledge and 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 interest in inquiry came through into my art so i ended up doing more um i suppose uh, kind of conceptual pieces that explore these ideas using text and books and and uh, and the internet itself is a resource it's a it's a it's a starting point for inquiry yeah and uh, so just going back to your student life within, within the university, how how long was the course duration? It was two years. It was a two year course. And you were involved in, so in, during your studies, two years, d- did you have your passion for IT still going on? You were still working with them. So, and, and how the art artistic started converting into a full time profession? So definitely the um, the masters really helps you to, uh, the tutors really push you quite hard to, to kind of ask yourself what it is that you re- is really important to you. What do you really want to carry forward? What, what are the subjects that are really important to you? So that two year period was a great catalyst for me to kind of unpack all the, all the thoughts in my brain 
put them on the table, have a look. Well, what have we got? And, and which which bits do I want to work with? Which, which, which what's going to be my subject area? So it was part of that that process that made me home in on ideas around knowledge and books and the internet as being my subject matter. So I think of books and text instead of squeezing out a tube of paint, I squeeze out you know a text. Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's a novel. Maybe it's Google News. Maybe it's kind of Facebook chatter those are my tubes of paint those are my source material so that was how how i how i found it how you then make it happen the thing about art school and the thing about being a student in general whatever you think about being a student you what you do have is a structure to your day and to the program and to the and to the subjects that you've got to do you've got to write an essay you've got to hand in some work as soon as you leave all of that leaves as well and you're kind of on your own as it were but so you have that transition to find your feet to find your way through the maze and there's no one answer to it everybody has to find their way in a way that works for them so it's different for everybody but it's a process of it's a process of getting to understand what you're trying to achieve i suppose yeah it must be Hard to recall uh, your student days here at the university dating back to 2011, but just for our audience perspective um, to make them understand that how, how it's going together as an artist, you're a student, as a mature student, you come from an IT background. And how is, so what was your first point where you thought now the art should be the full-time profession? And did you leave IT or did you continue both together? I continued both together. I'd been it'd be it'd been a long process. I I I'd started working part time, and I'd started to look for um, flexible working patterns in my IT so that I could find more room for my art. So I was already working part time, and I'd it wasn't as though I woke up one morning and said to everybody, to my family and my friends, "Hey, guess what, folks? I'm chucking it all in, and I'm going to be an artist from now on." I'd been telling people for as long as they would hear that that was what I wanted to do. So it was a process of moving towards it and finding flexible ways of working that would allow it in. So when I started uh, doing the masters, I was still working part time with my uh, IT hat on. And I continued to do that for some while afterwards as a kind of a, a bridge between the two. And I probably would still do more of it now if, if it weren't for the fact that IT moves so fast and you've got to really keep uh, your skill set up to date. So I now do some adult education, which helps to pay the bills. And um, I apply for Arts Council grants. You can get grants to help with your project work. And there are call outs for various projects where you can hope to get grants for, for, for doing your work. But it, it's not easy. It's a very much a different flavour of doing things. It's a kind of mix and match approach to trying to trying to make it happen, really. Yeah, and uh, there is an uh, interesting terminology which emerged while I was reading your bio. It's called Dr. Good. So do you have a PhD or you're a doctor? No, this was this was a this was something I developed because I, I'm interested in giving talks. One of the things I like about art is is the way it can be a catalyst for a conversation. I like sharing art. I like sharing ideas. I like discussing art. I like showing people ideas. And so one of the ways that I want to what I'm in, what I'm interested in is the, is the contrast between art and science. Art and so t people talk about STEM subjects as being science, technology, engineering, maths. And then where does art fit in? So I developed this persona called Dr. Good. Now, I'm definitely not a doctor, but I started my talks taking a subject area discussing it from a point of view as an artist and then I'd put on my lab coat and my goggles and my hard hat and get my clipboard and pretend to be a doctor which, or, or rather adopt the personality or the viewpoint of a scientific approach to the same subject as a way of comparing and contrasting the two. So it's playing a little bit fast and loose but I've never claimed to be a doctor although occasionally I do get emails saying hello Dr Good as a result. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you must have been into a lot of exhibitions where you have presented your own work. Was there any uh, any event, any occasion that you can recall where you were trying to intersect these two areas together and what you were trying to convey and how, how was it been received by, you, by the viewers? 
Well, for example, um, in some of my work, I, t I take um, uh, um, text from the internet, for example, all the kind of news feeds we get or or the kind of junk that we get on online, and I turn it into these digital animations and then I show those uh, to, to people and um, then I get, get the feedback from them. So I'm kind of critiquing the internet. You know, I don't know about you, but I find myself almost kind of locked into the internet, locked into this online experience. It's very difficult for us to kind of separate ourselves from, from our online persona. So this was a critique, a criticism, a, a way of trying to get us to step back from our online selves. And I was showing my work and, and having the discussions and I was, I was critiquing it quite hard saying, you know, we're all becoming obsessed with our phones and we're all getting kind of slightly, you know, too close to technology. And somebody put their hand up and said, well, hang on a second, but what about all the benefits that technology gives us and, and the internet gives us? And so it's, it's, it's easy to forget the, the flip sides to, to, to everything. And, and that's why sharing your work, having a conversation can remind you about, about other points of view. And that's important, isn't it? Chat GPT and AI and all of those things are kind of next level. Whatever, you know, there's a lot of chatter around them, but there's no doubt about it. I mean, I've used Chat GPT already to do some of my Python programming for me. You know, some of the stuff that I'd be hacking around for about a week to do, I just ask it and it, and it gives me some, some lovely code straight off. It may not be perfect, but it saved me so much time. I mean, I've asked ChatGPT, you know, what should I do for an exhibition? You know, give me some ideas for an exhibition. I mean, that's the new reality of where we are. And so from my point of view, being interested in art and technology and having a background in technology, it's absolutely part of what I want to investigate. So going back to your questions about, well, how does art and technology relate together? My art is a way of questioning, you know, what, what 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 does chat gp mean for us where does that leave us where do we you know where does truth leave us now that we've got all this contingency so it's just another another thing for me to investigate yeah and interestingly you have uh, interest in in the internet side of things and the art technology so do you think the artificial intelligence is going to have an impact on these two areas and have you got any future coming up planning into having AI included in your areas as well? I think AI is is is, is going to be fascinating. You know, everybody's concerned, not just in, in the arts and the creative industries, you know, all the strikes in Hollywood and, and uh, so on. But but in, in, in general, I think people just don't know how it's going to play out. But uh, potentially it, it is going to change the landscape. And, and probably the, the short answer is in ways that we don't don't yet know. But definitely it's something that I'm looking to include. I've got a, an ongoing project that I'm hoping to have quite a big show next year about called A Cybernetic Meadow. And it's going to be an, uh, um, an installation where people can walk around and through all of these different artworks. And they're all going to be different little critiques of, of our internet lives. And so definitely one of them I would like to have an AI uh, piece of work there. I've I've written a truth bot, which is my own little uh, piece in Python, and it wanders through Wikipedia and it brings back all these little facts for you, and it just this endless scroll of facts to uh, to consider. So definitely, yeah. And this takes to my next question is about your very other interesting book. It's called A New Dictionary of Art, is it? And you have three thousand definitions of one word art what is the story behind it and and what made you come up with this book well it's a funny one particularly in this context because it was actually when i was doing my masters and i was getting a little bit cross i'm sure my tutors won't mind me saying but i was getting a little cross with all the all the theory about what art is and what art can be and you know art is this but it's not that and i was there's so many kind of people telling me what art is and isn't and so I thought, uh, instead, I'll go to the internet. I'll see what the internet tells me art is. And of course, in chat rooms and on Google searches and everywhere, you've got thousands of people with offering opinions as to what art is. So I started collecting them. 
And I and I just collected all of these definitions, and some of them are sensible, some of them are silly, some of them are, you know, uh, really kind of heartfelt. And I didn't know what to do with them until one day I suddenly realised this is this is a new dictionary. This is a a new a new way of thinking about the definition of art. You know, it's silly to, to try. People are very passionate about art. You know, they say, oh, that's definitely not art. That's there's no way that is art. But I like that one. That's art. So people are very territorial about what they think art can and cannot be. But actually, it's everything. It's all of it's all of these things. So my book has all of these lists of different people with different opinions and they're all fighting it out on the page. And actually that provides a more closer definition, a closer sense of what art is. Art is a conversation and all these definitions are conversations between people saying it's this and it's that and it's the other, rather than one people saying art is, you know, a particular way of doing X, Y and Z. It's not a philosophical, uh, a philosophical definition, it's a conversation. You know, when I, when you first gave me your book, and when I, when I had it just just crossed the papers, I saw that there's only one particular word, art, written on each and every paper. I was like, is there something wrong with this book? <laughs> yeah, it is very interesting. But you have got I, I've never seen this before that that kind of a a, a, a thought to have art as one definition written in three thousand different ways. And my first thought was, this is a printing mistake. <laughs> 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 but then when I Going back to the title, you said three different ways of definition of defining an art. Yes, which is an interesting thing. And also your 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 work, you have uh, showcased uh, your your work in some respected institutions, uh, such as Tata Modern, I think. Uh, what strategies did you apply in getting your your, your artistic work stocked there? So the, the 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 dictionary, yes, the dictionary was stocked um, in the Tate Modern Bookshop, as you say, and it was in Kettle's Yard here in Cambridge, and it was in Bristol and and uh, Middlesbrough and Leeds and 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 a lot of art galleries and and uh, places around the country. To be honest, it was it was like a lot of like a lot of art behind the scenes. It's a, it's a lot of hard work. People don't always realise, and it's true of all kind of enterprise and and you know it's like a small business, isn't it? You, there's an awful lot that you have to do behind the scenes to make it happen. And so um, I, I produced the book with um, a publisher called Jane Glennie, who who did the publishing and the design. Um, and um, then we went about trying to get it stocked, as I say, in these bookshops. And you have to, you have. There's a lot of kind of uh, emails, conversations, um, you know, visits, turning up. And then finally, they say, "Yeah, okay, we'll we'll stock it." And they say, "Okay, we'll have we'll have five copies on sale or return." And you think, "Wow, you know, that's 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 not that many." You know, it, it, you've got a you've you've got quite a lot of work to do, and then you have to kind of keep the stock turning over. So we managed to sell several hundred copies, nearly a thousand, I think we're up to now. So we did we did mm. quite well with it. Um, but it's and we did some talks, we put on a we had a whole launch, we had a press release, we had some publicity events, we had an exhibition that went with it. You know, you have to build up a whole kind of little publicity machine for it. We had a big crowd yeah. campaign, um, social media. So we had a lot of people buying the book online. So, yeah, all of those things, all of those things that are yeah. part of any enterprise, really. And then the book is still available online. Uh, yes, definitely. It's online. You can get it from Amazon. I think it's still stocked on Amazon or yeah. you can get it online or at Peculiarity Press or um, stop me in the street and buy one. <laughs> and we can just put that link, Amazon link in the, in the description uh, for if anyone is interested to get a copy. And and you're also the director on, and founder of ALL, as it stands for Art Language Location. That's right. It, yeah. So what was this company all about, and is it still functional? Well, uh, funny enough, so it it started. It was my response to leaving art school. I, I say after you leave art school, or after you leave the university generally, if you if you don't do something yourself, you know n nobody's going to do it for you. And my way of staying connected was to start this ALL organization, Art Language Location, which was a way for me to meet other artists, work with other artists, invite other artists to Cambridge to put on exhibitions around Cambridge. And we did this for, well, about five or seven years, I think. 
Um, and it was fantastic. It was a really great experience. I got to know so many different artists and we managed to get some grants from the Arts Council to help us out. And Anglia Ruskin also funded us uh, with um, a lot of uh, a lot of help with uh, we, we showed our work at um, the Ruskin Gallery and around uh, the campus. And we also managed to go to um, Finland and to uh, Bosnia Herzegovina on on travel grants from it. So it was a great opportunity to bring artists together. And actually, this year is the tenth anniversary of, of of it doing. So we stopped doing it partly because it was becoming so big and it took so much time and energy that we would have to turn into kind of full time arts um, coordinators rather than artists. So we kind of put it on the back burner, but this year is the 10th anniversary and we're gonna do something in Cambridge in October to celebrate 10 years of the project. So that'll be a great opportunity for artists to come together and, and to show some work in Cambridge. Yeah, that'll be nice. Just also let us know if there is any opportunity available for the students here at ARU. We can just put that link in, in the description of this video. Uh, that'll be nice for them to join as well. Definitely, yes. Yeah, that'd be nice, great, yeah. 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 And asking uh, from, a, from a student's perspective, those students who are aspiring to be a future artist or a full time into an artistic work, uh, what are the strategies you used to have a platforms in prestigious institutions showcase your work? There's there's no magic wand, I'm afraid. And 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 so one thing is I would say is that there are different, many different flavors of being an artist. So first of all, you need to kind of know what you want to do. So even to say, you know, showing your work in a prestigious gallery, funnily enough, not everybody wants to do that. So there are lots of different ways to be an artist. But if you do, then the the ways to do it, I mean, you do you do have to kind of keep your eyes and ears open. I think the most important thing I would say is, is rather than worrying too much about that, is to enjoy the journey and to become more confident about what it is that you're doing. If, you're, if you know what you're trying to do, that comes across and that will open new doors. It Rather than trying to push at a door that feels closed, you know, something like, you know, one of these galleries can feel a very intimidating place and they get a lot of inquiries. So you're going to get a lot of pushback. So you need a little bit of a thick skin, but also not to worry too much about that, but to make sure that you, you work as hard as you can and as well as you can on the work that you're doing. And then the opportunities they may or may not come, but they they generally will because you're going to be focused on a particular area. And by doing that and sharing your work online and attending symposiums and going to exhibitions and talking to people, you will naturally find your own ecosystem, as it were, your own fellow travellers who are also interested in the same sort of area. And then once you've got that little group of people who are likewise interested, well, then you can work together to put something on as a group show, maybe, or you've got some experience that then you, you know, you'll become to the notice of the people who are interested in what you're doing. And you'll start to be, you'll start to move from having to hustle really hard and say, can I do something here or can I do something there? To people saying, would you like to show with us? People will start to take note and will start to invite you. And that's a really nice place to be then because you start to get opportunities from other people. Yes, sir. And, and you mentioned about uh, ecosystem. Uh, so just, just on that area, because arts arts field is more of an undefined path and it, it is different for each person, how, how it works. Any sort of support resources that you want to highlight to the current students who are aspiring? I think, hmm, I think, let me just have a think about that. Um, I think what I would say is is the most the most the most important is is to once when well whilst you're still at university but once you leave as well is to make contact with 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 art institutes art organisations studio spaces places that are are supporting artists in different ways do your homework do your research um, go online find find these places 
and just just approach them and and start a conversation with them and and find your community. Uh, there's no there's no there are there are all sorts of um, resources online um, that are really interesting to follow and and ways that you can stay connected online. But that will take you so far. I think the kind of the personal touch, you know, the being involved uh, is is the extra thing. And and apply for things. Yeah, thank you. And how important you think the entrepreneurial mindset is for students in arts? I think really important. And I think this is almost invisible. I think a lot of people, they look at an exhibition, they might go along to an exhibition and 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 the classic thing is, well, well, I could have done that, you know, and and or it's very easy, or you know, well, that's not difficult. I think most people have got no idea how much hard work there is behind the scenes. And a lot of it is very a skill set that actually can be very transferable. Um, project management skills, you know, you, it's all very well to be a kind of, uh, you know, an artist and just like, but if you've got an exhibition, that's a deadline you've got to work to. You've got a lot of people that you've got to, you know, coordinate. You've got finances to think about. You've got publicity to organise. You then got to be on on top of that. You've got to be creative yourself and come up with an idea that you want to show. So you need good time management skills. Uh, you need people management skills, and you need to kind of hustle a little bit because it's not it's not always easy. Um, but it's fun. It's a privileged thing to do. It's a different it's a different thing. You know, I've I've seen both sides because I've worked in a nine to five for a long time. I've worked in an office. I know what it's like to 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 turn up at nine on Monday morning and 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 stay there till till five thirty. So, so I've done both sides of it. So it's a very privileged thing, but it's a very flexible. It's very open ended. It's quite scary. I'm not sure I could have done it when I was, you know, first time round because it's not easy. But but it has its own rewards and it's a fantastic thing to be able to do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, all such amazing tips to our to our audience, to our students, to our aspiring artists. As we're now coming to conclusion, you have any final thoughts? No, um, only that um, do it. I would say I was it's something it's something that you need to be passionate about. If if you if it is an itch that has to be scratched, so you're going to do it because you can't not do it. So it's that if you if you've got that motivation, then something will happen. It may not happen in the way that you want it to happen. It may not happen exactly how you think it should happen, but you've got to enjoy the ride and enjoy the process and remind yourself that you're having this fantastic opportunity to, to express yourself. Uh, and it's not going to be easy, but it is going to be a lot of fun as well. And, and a mix and match, you know, it's not, it's not, doesn't have to be one or the other. Even if you have to take, I say, if you have to, I don't want to phrase this the wrong way, but let's say you, you, you know, you, you, you have to find yourself a full-time job. So everybody's got to pay the bills. You can still, be creative, hang on to that creativity and um, find a way for, forward. And I'd be very happy to talk to anybody if they if they would like some advice or help. I, I, I think it's important, you know, to be available to try, you know, if I can. I'm not saying that I've got any answers, but, um, you know, I'm always I'm always happy to talk to people about um, uh, ideas and, and, and things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Good, for joining us today. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying in tune with us. This is Omkar Singh signing off. <laughs>